I'm Josh Liston from On The Bubble Podcast, a proud member of the Gunner Geek Network, just like the show you're listening to now. The opinions expressed are those of each individual host. Check out all the other podcasts at gunnergeeknetwork.com and get ready, because geekiness begins in 3, 2, 1. Stand by for a brand new episode of All Things Good and Nerdy. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to episode 370 of the All Things Good and Nerdy podcast. This is recorded live on Sunday, August 18th, 2019. We have successfully made it another week. I don't know about anyone else. I'm excited to hear that. Willie, are you excited to have made it another week? It's been another week already, man. What what happened? <laughs> uh, yeah. Willie, Willie is unsure how time works. <laughs> What? It's all timey-wimey and wibbly-wobbly, isn't that right, Anthony? Yes, it is, and it's been another week, and we're still alive. I am very excited that we made it another week. Any week that can make it through alive is a good man, You guys are, you guys there, are just there, speaking words, man. There, there, there was a really good reason to make it through this week that we'll talk about later. Porn? No. Oh, well, I'm out. Better. Better oh, yeah, porn. I said it. I said it. Oh shit! Bachman got laid. Bachman got laid. That's didn't he? not what it was yeah. at all. <laughs> well, you said it was better than porn. So that would be better than porn. <laughs> I have a bump for that too. I won't play it though. <laughs> Menacingly. <laughs> oh, sensual. Oh, uh, yeah. There, there it goes. That's <laughs> nope. I mean, that's how I start every session. All the sensual is gone. It's so sensual. Willie told Ew. you it was sensual getting laid. No. No, you said that. it was better than porn. So, I mean, I'm confused here. There's only one thing better than porn. That's not true. There's lots of things better There's than porn. There's lots of things better than porn. A good steak well, and baked potato is better than porn. You know what? Depends on the steak. <laughs> depends on the baked potato. Depends right. on the porn. He, Jesus Christ, we just got deep here. <laughs> <laughs> this but is no. a porn talk on all things good and nerdy. So why? Like, I have a... I have a serious question here. Oh, I have sorry. never understood this ever. Uh-oh. Why? Why is steak like so good to people? Like I have had steak before. It's just, I mean, it's not the greatest. I don't, I don't just. I mean, it's all right, but I don't see why it's like you go here like to the steakhouse. I'm gonna get the the, the best cut of steak. But it's just it's wait, wait, whatever. So Willie, what is the best cut of steak then? I don't know. I just hear that, and I'm just like, I don't understand it. Like steak isn't that good i mean it's good but it's not like that like people put it on that pedestal it's like oh, 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 oh. it's not that uh, i don't get it so what is that for you then i mean it's a matter of taste i suppose you don't have to prefer steak but what is what is that mm. primo food on your food pedestal that you don't have a whole bunch but is like how you treat yourself or you get treated with what is that for you willie I mean, Stromboli's are pretty damn good. I'm not gonna lie. Anything with a lot of cheese. Cheese is cheese is the bee's knees, motherfucker. <laughs> okay, I can't disagree with that. But mm. some greasy cheese. Oh my god, greasy cheese. Oh, I'm thinking of porn right now. Uh-huh. <laughs> and it just got creepy again. And that's how we got the gout. <laughs> <laughs> well, technically, the steak is how you get the gout. <laughs> the three things. <laughs> I think you got yours from cheese, apparently, because you don't I mean, got no oh love God. for steak. Oh, God, don't tell me that. <laughs> I mean, I still love burgers. I love burgers. Don't tell me. Don't get me wrong there. I, th- I think a good burger is better than a steak any damn day. So, burgers. You saw, I don't know if you guys have seen, let me rephrase this. Uh, all Burger Kings across the country are doing for a limited run the Impossible Whopper. You're a yep, I had guy, one. Really. Are you going to try it? I mean, I wouldn't be against trying it. That's, that's how I look at it, too. And some one of the folks at work was like, you really want to try that? I was like, yeah, why not? It might be good. Who knows? Yeah. I had one. No. I had one this week. Was it good? It wasn't bad. It's... Was there a difference? Yes. You can taste that it's not meat. Like, it's, it's very strange because it's not bad. Like, it's almost... It's it's hard to describe because it is. It's like okay, yeah. Let me try a, a slab of that lab grown vegetable meat substitute. But like, it has flavoring to it, and it has a good texture. It. I mean, 
I've had burgers at places where the burger wasn't as good as the Impossible Burger, but I would definitely rather have a Whopper than an Impossible Whopper. Like, it wasn't as good as their burgers. But it's close. Like, it's really close. Yeah, I've heard it's close. It does cost more yeah. than an actual burger, but it's an interesting option for, like, vegetarians and folks like that who would normally go to Burger King and be like, well, gee, I'm going to buy a side salad, and that's about all I can eat that's on the menu. Yeah, I mean, if if the only if your only thing is you don't want to eat you know actual meat and you just want to try one to for the taste, it's not bad. They're definitely not bad. Like I I had I did my normal lunch order, but I just I got that burger instead of a Texas double like I normally do. Had that instead with my fries and my drink, and I was perfectly happy at the end of lunch. Since we go on the fast food, I'm gonna be a little more controversial. Uh, uh, Whoppers Uh-oh. are better than Big Macs. That's not controversial at all. Really? I thought yeah. people would like Big Macs. Blah, 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 blah. Now, if you tried to tell me a Whopper was better than the analogous burger at like a Wendy's, I'd tell you you were full of shit. What's well, the analogous burger at Wendy's? Just like the Dave's. The Dave's whatever. Double. Dave's well, the, single, the, whatever. the Whopper and the Big Mac aren't even the same type of burger. The Whopper is more like the quarter pounder at McDonald's. Well, the Big Mac is gross because Big Mac sauce is gross. That's really what it comes down to. I don't. See, know. I, was I, never... I, I was literally gestated on that stuff. That's what my mom craved while she was pregnant with me was Big Mac sauce, and it couldn't be like made at home. My real dad had to stop and get a Big Mac on his way home from work every single day, so my mom could have one while she was making dinner. <laughs> God damn! That's I'm I'm partially sauce. made. I'm partially made out of Big Mac sauce. <laughs> why? Why didn't they just call you? Why didn't they just name you Mac? That I don't know. Hilarious. I'm glad they didn't. Yeah, my mom said it was the only weird craving she had, but she had like a Big Mac a day while she was having her cravings for like four months straight with me. McDonald's loved your mom is what I'm getting out of this. Apparently. Wait, wait, yeah. wait, wait. Hold on a second. I, I Serious question here. When you're born, the parents can just name you anything. They don't. You don't have to technically have the same last name when you're born, no. right? They can just name you anything, right? Legally, your parents can name you anything they want. So it's they like, legally, if you are in court changing your name and you're not ducking creditors that's the one caveat you can legally change your name to anything you want uh so you could have been named anthony mackman i would have loved that well since bachman wasn't my birth last name it would have been different but i see your point i don't remember all this (laughs) i don't don't talk about this that often i don't even know if we even have i think willie should change his name to willie big mac nelson yeah that'd be a good one see I'm might be thinking. Gamer, might be a hard gamer I'm tag to thinking. Throw down. Think of how you could sell the ladies on you back. My name's Big Mac. Loading. Well, I mean, once what, the pants Will come down, they're the going to know that's not true at all. Nelson. <laughs> the the Impossible Nelson. The Impossible Nelson. Impossible Nelson. I, don't know. I like it. That's got a weird ring to it. Like it seems like it should work, but then it kind of doesn't, and it but it still kind of does. It's weird. That's the Nell part. That's what throws it off a little you bit. Just like Willie Chicken Biscuit Nelson. <laughs> <laughs> now that fits. That would All be right. awesome. We yeah. had an ar- I remember having an argument with Beef and Naki in Chicago Uh-oh. during C2E2. How uh, <laughs> I many was that? Four, three years ago? Three or four. Three and a half. Like three and a half years ago, I believe. It was 2016, I believe. Yeah, we had an argument with something that, that, uh, that um, uh, McDonald's serves a chicken biscuit. They do in some regions, not all regions. Uh, yeah, they do yeah. Not. They said they didn't. I was like, yeah, they do. They're right. Yeah, I, I get them. I eat them. They're, they're, they're all right. They're little, the biscuit's kind of whatever, and it's way buttery than it should be. That's because you live in the South, motherfucker. Globally, well, McDonald's does not serve a chicken biscuit. There's never been a chicken biscuit at a McDonald's I've been to. Well, I mean, it's, I mean, you're not missing much. I mean, uh, Bojangles. Uh. I mean, there's McDonald's in Russia that serve like beer and champagne. It's it's about regions. It's about different laws in different areas, stuff like that. So, yeah, they have different menus in different places. Yeah, you guys haven't had a biscuit until you've had a Tudor's Biscuit World biscuit. A where? Tudor's Biscuit. Tudor's? I don't know what a Tudor's is. Never heard is. of it. Uh, is that local only to you? I don't think it's – I think it's local to the state. It's a chain in oh, the okay. state, but it's a biscuit that's like, no joke, probably this big around, and goddamn, it's delicious. And you can get it with it, are Bojangles that's a big damn only in the southeast, or are they everywhere? Bojangles is not everywhere. Do you you have Bojangles, right, Chris? In the southern part of the state, I think we don't have it up here in the northern okay. part of the state. Bachman, have you ever heard of Bojangles? 
I've heard of them. I've never seen or been to one. Or as my friends like to call it, Bohangles. Bohangles? I like it. Bohangles? I actually like that a lot. It's because, you know, I I have some Spanish-speaking friends, so they say Bohangles. But yeah, oh man, that 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 oh that Cajun uh, raw chicken biscuit. Oh my god, that is the chicken biscuit that all chicken biscuits should strive to be. Uh, until I try the the Tudor, whatever you called it, Tudor's biscuit world. Yeah, until I try that, Biscuitville, it's okay. I would say it's okay. That spicy honey biscuit they got. Oh my god. Is this the is this the is this the uh, the food episode? Is that what it this is? is? I, I tell you what, Willie. Next time you find your way up here, we'll go to Tudor's Biscuit World, and I'll buy you a Mountaineer biscuit, which is country ham, potato, egg, and cheese on a giant ass biscuit. It's delicious. That has no chicken at all. You don't have to have chicken to be delicious. It's still damn. All good. right, I'm gonna be weird again. I don't know. I might have here already said go. this again. Here we go. I don't like <laughs> egg. I really don't like egg. I don't know what it is. I have I keep trying it every now and then every like there's, you know, maybe there's something wrong year, with you that's what it is there's about something wrong twice with you. a year I try it to see if I like it and just something about it no, just notice just tastes bad to me like I don't like it then Willie, like I when, keep trying it though when you have to give me that next, I'll get you one of these two other biscuit options then there is the minor which is bacon potato and melted cheese on a biscuit or you, you, d- d- yeah. d- no d- don't even that d- that's the best that you got. What's the other one? I was going to say shaved say ham it. melt, which is shaved ham and melted cheese on a biscuit, which yeah. would also be good. No, the, uh, that first one. Okay, so if you come it, up this way next, I will buy you the minor biscuit, which is bacon, potato, like a hash brown, a big-ass flat hash brown, and melted cheese on a big buttery biscuit. Please don't tell me it's American cheese, because that would ruin it. I don't know what kind of cheese it is. It better probably be cheddar. American cheese, but I'm not sure. It better be cheddar. Uh, or, God, please don't be pimento. Oh, I can't eat pimento no, no, cheese no. anymore. Uh, I live in West Virginia. We don't do pimento cheese. Thank God. I had that way too much as a kid. <laughs> I just can't anymore. It's just disgusting to me now. God, now I really want Tudor's biscuit, and they're what so terrible for me. <laughs> You're welcome, Chris. I'm going to pull the nutrition Lombardo facts biscuit. For, uh, for the minor, which is 843 calories for the minor, 40 grams of fat. 366 Ooh. grams of fat or calories per mm, fat. Mm, mm, mm. Listen, my body is staying its same weight. 12 grams around of like, saturated fat. My body um, likes to stay around 250. I'm letting it do that. It doesn't my body like is ready for a biscuit. It doesn't like to be more. It's what it likes to be at. <laughs> Man, it, 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 it works for me because I'm, you know, six foot four. So I'm not like, blah. How's that go again? I'm sorry. Blah. Uh, I'm working on my blah. It's getting bigger and bigger. <laughs> but yeah, I, I don't think calorie. Is... My body likes to be this certain weight, and it likes to stay that certain weight. So I let it. Why fight it? He's got a point. We're all going to be dead in a few years, anyways. So what's it matter? Yeah, the sun's going to blow up in a couple of years. I used to like one of the things that uh, Gabriel Iglesias used to say when he we went seriously hardcore into chocolate cakes. Like People used to bring him cakes at the end of his shows, and he would take them all back to his hotel and eat them. And he was very large. Like There was a point where Gabriel Iglesias, I mean, there's a reason he's called Fluffy. I think he was almost 400 pounds. And he's been on the DDP yoga and lost like a ton of weight and looks a lot healthier, but he's still a big boy. But in his stand-up act, when people used to talk about it, I was like, you know... Funny fact, comedians usually don't last long. They usually die young. Yep. You know, We've had a lot of fantastic comedians that were overweight that we lost, a lot of it due to health issues, also a lot of it due to drugs. But, oh, I was going to say that. Know, yeah, you mix the drugs and the alcohol yeah. with the bad health issues, it kills you early. But his only real health issue was that he, you know, he drank some, didn't do drugs, but he ate, like, awful, awful, awful. But his whole point was, you know what? If I'm going to die tomorrow morning and I could have had a chocolate cake tonight, I'd rather have the chocolate cake tonight. <laughs> we don't know. Tomorrow ain't promised to nobody. You might die tomorrow. You might get hit by a bus and asteroid might fall in your house. You got no way of fucking knowing. I mean, you you can spend your whole life being the healthiest person ever. You're still going to eventually die. If you want a biscuit, have a biscuit, motherfucker. I Enjoy mean, life. <laughs> that's my takeaway of this. I'm going to get a minor biscuit. <laughs> there you go. Enjoy your life. Well, I'm going to have me some coffee. Uh, can I get two, please? 
Sure, why not? I'm going to try and find where yeah. the nearest Tudor's Biscuit World is to you right now, Willie. How you have big one. are these biscuits? Like, Willie, you have one for you, and you have one for me. I'll have one for Chris. Give me three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Willie, they're really just kind of a West Virginia thing. you got to come up our way right. to be able to get one. one and I will there. say this. Uh, uh, and I usually kind of technically, I think I only eat like once or twice a day. That's about it. I mean, that. I mean, I'm weird like that. I never eat breakfast. I'm never hungry during the morning time. So why put more food in my stomach than than when it doesn't, you know, want it? That's but, uh, you do you, man. You do you. Yeah. I know it's unhealthy. I, why, why is putting food in your stomach in the morning time better for you? I never understood that. Because your metabolism is more ramped up than it is later in the day. Yeah. It well, gets then your it, metabolism, can... it gets your metabolism started. Well, then my body needs to start being hungry then. Like when I think about eating something during breakfast, like, no, yeah. no, also, you're full. It's also per the person. Some people are much better with their workout if they do the intermittent fasting. Like uh, Joe Rogan's one of those people now. He doesn't eat his first meal till like three in the afternoon. That dude's in amazing shape for the age he's at. And he eats mainly, you know, just raw meat and veggies and then, you know, lifts weights and does his jujitsu. And he's a fucking cut buff like damn near 60 year old like raw beef and raw chicken yeah he eats a lot of just steak elk steak from elk oh he's rare elk. You yeah mean just, rare i mean not rare like he cooks it but i mean it's just oh, you so know, it's no, rare no, no not processed raw. meat rare. yeah rare just no processed meat just like most of the stuff on his instagram when he shows a picture it's a it's a slab of elk and a bunch of like uh barbecued jalapenos like he just throws it all in his grill cooks it up and eats that and that's his dinner but he's one of those guys that he a lot of times he won't eat till like three in the afternoon. Some people they need to do like especially if they're working out and trying to build muscle mass, they'll do that thing where you eat every three hours so that your body's just constantly mm -hmm. burning calories. Because if you're doing that every, you know, eating like six meals a day, when you do that, your body just keeps burning calories all day long. It basically never stops until you go to sleep, and then you're still burning calories while you're sleeping. But yeah, it keeps your engine going. But yeah, it, it really depends on the person. Because, yeah, I mean, I've seen awesome results from both, but some people, the intermittent fasting shit just doesn't work because some people wake up starving. I'm one of those people, I wake up and I hate eating breakfast. When I was working out uh, seven days a week when we did our Westpac and I had to force myself to eat four meals a day, it was tough. I had trouble eating that often. Just It doesn't work as well for some people. All right, and since Joe Rogan was mentioned, we do have we had to have a legal obligation to do this joke. Uh -oh. uh, so where in his diet does DMT take place? <laughs> um I, I think it's i think he does it about quarterly or annually now at least at this point he does it a lot he likes yeah, that I mean, you guys have seen that joke right i've no idea he's like just about talking about something randomly and it's like well have you ever thought about dmt just out of nowhere like joe rogan no nah, he's a big proponent of it he thinks it's a, one of those things that when he did it it basically unlocked part of his mind and i mean it is a natural chemical in the human body that we create ourselves so and it's something that's been in cultures for thousands of years that people have done it a specific way during rituals. And now basically we can just take a drug and do the same thing. But I mean, he's a big proponent of it because it helped him and he feels he's a better person after having done it. It's just like some people, you know, once they smoke weed realize, Oh, I don't have to be angry at the world. They're like, man, you're angry at the world. Try some weed. <laughs> he's, he's a big proponent of that too. <laughs> He's one of those guys when he finds something that works that made his life better, he wants to get his friends to at least try it. Because it like, and he said it on the podcast, it's not for everybody. Not everybody's going to have a great trip when they go on DMT, but a lot of people have done it and been like, oh shit. And then their life's different and better from that point going forward. So here's what you can take away from this Joe Rogan does some drugs. Joe Rogan does a lot of the drugs. Lots, so many lots drugs. of the drugs. So many drugs. Yep. But we're not Joe Rogan. But you know who we are? Who are we, Willie? Where is he going with this? We're all things good and nerdy. That's true. And what do we do? Talk about the news. Live from the ATGN studios on uh, the internet, it's the news of the week. They cued me up. I had to do it. We're into the news. It week. felt it felt right, man. It just felt right. Can you blame me? It worked pretty well. I'll give you full yeah. credit right there. So we are into the news of the week. 
It's that part of the show where we run down what's in our minds, some of the most interesting geeky and or nerdy news to have popped up here in the past week, and then share it with you guys who are watching live or listening at a later date. So, hey, Anthony, why don't you kick us off with your news this week? All right. Well, mine is a, a stack of three quick things. I'm just uh, hitting up the Hollywood Reporter for all the all the all the local gossip. Uh, Good Boys went nuts in the box office and had a hell of a big weekend. Was looking at a $21 million debut for the weekend for a comedy about 12 year olds that want to learn how to kiss before going to their first uh, middle school party. And lucky me, uh, I picked it in the fantasy movie draft league. And look who's in first place this week and took first place for the season because of how well I'm doing this week. Because I picked five screens of the good boys and all five screens got the $2 million bonus right now. So that's an extra $10 million on top of my already good pick. Hell yeah. Good boys taking me for the win. I forgot to set my thing this week. Oh, did you forget? Yeah, because you got three of the scary stories and two Hollywood, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, which yeah. I'll talk about in my next article. But yeah, so congratulations to the good boys. You know, another another uh, comedy. Uh, the, and it's uh, Seth Rogen and them. Like, and they're... Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg, man, they they seem to put their heads together and do good stuff. Preacher's amazing. Freaking um, I mean, good boys. They did well with Sausage Party, uh, The End of the World. Like, those guys have done some great, funny, funny things and to, some really weird things, too. To be fair, good boys just seems like a middle school version of Super Bad. It is kind of, yeah. It's, it's not bad. Like, yeah, Not like taking the concept of super bad, just kind of rewinding it in time a little bit to where the characters are way more innocent. Because, yeah, the characters that they were playing in, again, super bad were not innocent. Like they were going out to a party to get fucking drunk. <laughs> they were very different. Yeah, these True. this seems to be the, the, the comedy aspect of this is that it's kids that are, you know, really unaware of a lot of the things going on in the world around them. And then they end up getting on the Internet and getting scared. But, yeah, it does look funny. But yeah, congratulations to Good Boys. It had itself a badass box office weekend. And then um, speaking of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, I had heard some good. I had heard some bad. Um, Kevin Smith's daughter is actually in the film. And so I was kind of looking forward to seeing it because uh, uh, Harley Quinn Smith got cast in a Quentin Tarantino film. Cool. And then I heard that there's a Bruce Lee scene in the movie. And then I started hearing uh, on Shannon Lee's uh, Twitter account, which is basically the Bruce Lee Corporation, all the stuff that they do, carrying her dad's legacy forward. She, you know, does a bunch of events, charity stuff, different, you know, products that they sell. And she had talked about how the the representation of her father felt kind of awful. And I was like, okay, that's shitty. Like his kid doesn't like it. Like that tells me like something something was off on it. <clears throat> and for those that don't know, uh, Kareem Abdul Jabbar, the uh, L.A. Laker great and just all around kick ass person, mm -hmm. starred alongside Bruce Lee in Game of mm -hmm. Death. One of the reasons he starred in that movie with him was Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was one of Bruce Lee's students. Um, Kareem learned with, you know, probably the greatest martial arts practitioner to ever walk the planet. Bruce actually was his instructor for a while. And I'm not going to read you the article, but all I think you need is the title. You can go look it up. I, I, I hope everybody go read it yourself because it is a great article. It says, uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Bruce Lee was my friend and Tarantino's movie disrespects him. So... That's all I need to know. I'm not going to pay to see this movie in the theater. I'll eventually catch it on Netflix or whatever. I'm, I'm not getting quitting any money in this, because if there's any part of this movie that disrespects the legacy of Bruce Lee, honestly, I want to have nothing to do with it. That's one of the greatest humans that's ever lived, one of my favorite philosophers. And it was a guy who, his, who lived his life to make other people's lives better. He was a fantastic human being. So I read the article. It's great. Uh, Cream has a, you know, his, his, the way he writes is really cool. He's got a really good, um, like, cadence to his writing. And it's a very pointed article specifically about representation of characters in Hollywood and how they're perceived. Because, of, you know, even in a fictional movie, the perception of a character can change the way the cultural perception of a person in real life is. And so that's something that, you know, we need to be aware of. And then... um. Just to hit on it real quick, I mean, it's not a huge one for me and, and probably not a huge one for any of us because we're not of our parents' generation. But uh, our parents' generation took a big hit this week because we lost uh, Peter Fonda. Uh, he, I mean, like, you know, one of the giants of acting at 79, you know, between, you know, Bridget Fonda, Jane Fonda, Henry Fonda, 
the Peter Fonda, the whole Fonda family has been, you know, like Hollywood staples since forever. Like I can't remember a time when there wasn't Fonda's acting. And yeah, the the fact that yeah, we lost a uh, we lost Peter Fonda who was, you know, was he what was it? Made Easy Rider for the same amount of money Roger Corman made Wild Angels and knew it would knock the audience's socks off. Like this is the guy that made Easy Rider. Like it's like he changed the cultural zeitgeist with with his work in Hollywood. So I mean, it's you know a huge loss for a lot of people. And I know it's not, at least I know for me, I go watch a couple of those movies growing up as a kid, but you know my parents really loved him. But it wasn't like a huge you know like for me it was like when Wes Craven died like that was a big one. But I mean I know for a lot of people you know, Easy Rider, Yuli's Gold, uh, let's see what was the other some of the other ones he had like. Just, you know, he's been working forever. The Cannonball Run stuff. Freaking, um, yeah, I think Yuli's Goal was the one my stepdad loved. But, yeah, it was a huge actor, huge, you know, huge life in Hollywood. One of those guys that just, like, seemed like he'd always been around and always would be around. But, yeah, so kind of sad we lost Peter Fonda this year. But yeah, and 79, like, that's not bad for, especially in Hollywood, Living, living rough. Life. Yeah. And, yeah, and sadly due to lung cancer. Fuck cancer. Cancer sucks. Yeah, so a little bit of good news for the good boys and then bad news for some other stuff. But yeah, I, I will be boycotting my $8. Quentin will not get it this time. Well, I mean, I've also <laughs> heard, to go back to that a little bit, is uh, from what I heard, that's what Quentin Tarantino heard he acted like. So that's the way you put it in there. Yeah, well, if you go off of rumors, then you're an idiot. <laughs> I don't, I didn't, I don't, I don't know where the person heard that from. That's just. What I've heard it's a secondhand, like, so. Do you really expect anyone's going to be portrayed as they are? I mean, let's be honest. Quentin Tarantino flicks are all about over exaggeration and ridiculousness. Yeah. And h- how long is even that character even in the movie? Long enough that it made an impact on his daughter and on one of his ex students. Yeah. So. If, if, it's, if, it's a, it. if it's enough to offend the family, I'm not going to spend money on it. I'll eventually watch it on Netflix. But it's also it's a, you know it's it's another Quentin film it's another Brad Pitt movie it's okay I'll see it eventually but I'm just I'm not, I'm not I'm gonna not, I'm not gonna give wanna, any box office money for it that's I all just I'm don't, saying the reason I'm seeing it is not because oh there's a Bruce Lee you know character in this I'm not seeing it for that I don't I know I mean really that care. wasn't the reason I was going to go see it but then when I heard there was a Bruce Lee character I was like okay that's cool and there's a guy playing Bruce Lee and then when I heard about how they did it it was like yeah I'm out. If you want to see it, that's cool. I ain't gonna be mad at you. I'm just know, saying, I'm not. I'm not gonna go. I don't really care. Yeah. I don't care about most Tarantino flicks, though. So <laughs> that's just me. Like this movie just looks good from the trailer. That's all I know. The whole thing, and then being like, Tarantino wants to do a Star Trek movie. I was like, I don't care. Eh. Was that him wanting to do a Star Trek movie, or is that them wanting to get him for Star both. Trek? <laughs> yeah, I think it was both. They wanted the name recognition of Quentin on a Star Trek movie, and I think. He wanted to do something different because he hasn't really stretched his genre that much. Like it's no matter where they are, you can call all of his films westerns basically, and it's just people talking. If you want to do another <laughs> Star Trek movie, I'm going to care about. Give it to Simon Pegg or bring Justin Lin back to do it again because I love Hell Star yeah. Trek Beyond. I fully admit Star Trek Beyond is my favorite of the new Trek movies. It's just fun. We need a Simon Pegg directed Star Trek film yeah, like I mean- that could be awesome suppose he was in the writer's room for star trek beyond so that's part of the reason why i think it works better but that's right god damn it I'm in. put we huey in charge he's not we huey though he is we huey i read what? the comics i know what we huey looks like oh. he looks like simon Pegg. simon Pe- but that's the dad played the dad in the show he played the dad in the show because the show took too goddamn long to make <laughs> mm-hmm. If they'd have done it originally when the book came out, it would have been Simon Pegg. When did it come out? Oh, the the boy started like yeah, like early two thousands. Okay, is yeah, it done been, now or is it still ongoing? Yeah, it's done. No, it's finished. It's finished. All yeah, right. which actually we talked about it last week. The humble bundle was over, but Comicsology still had a sale going on. I'll check to see if it's still going. They had every single trade on sale for the last two weeks. But yeah, that's my news. Well, I'll take the next piece then. Uh, Willie was talking about in the pre-show. Disney Plus, he wants to know more about the bundles and deals like that. Sadly, I don't have information about any of the changes for the bundles or anything like that. You bastard. I am a bastard. <laughs> However, 
Deadline and a variety of other Hollywood <laughs> blogs and websites are reporting. Remember, go back a couple years, there was rumors there was going to be an Obi-Wan Kenobi movie that Ewan McGregor would return to. Well, now they are saying that Ewan McGregor, the 48-year-old Scottish actor, will be returning to the role of Obi-Wan Kenobi in a Kenobi series on Disney+. Plus. Now, we don't know any more details as to how many Hell episodes the, yeah. the series is, how long it's going to run, what all they're going to do. We just know that the rumor has gotten solid enough that reputable sites are reporting it and saying basically, hey, wait for the D23 convention where they're going to announce this and a few other surprises that are coming to Disney Plus. Because by all accounts, Disney wants to crush it by dropping their streaming service out there, by having so much content on it that you start to think, oh, I'm going to go to the Disney Plus service first and not other things. So it should be interesting. Remember, they were going to make a Boba Fett movie, which then kind of turned into the Mandalorian TV series. So this isn't really unheard of. It's not exactly a demotion either to be like, hey, we don't want to make a movie with you. We want to make an exclusive TV series. that will probably have the same budget as a movie. So, uh, Chris, do any of those details matter? No, it's Ewan McGregor coming back as Obi-Wan Kenobi. Exactly. I mean, I, I, let's <laughs> exactly. be honest. Exactly. <laughs> And uh, FYI, all of the boys' trade paperbacks are still on sale on Comixology. So if you want to get that whole series, it's way cheap right now. Most of them are three ninety nine for the trades. So it's real cheap to buy the entire run right now. Now, Willie, I know you probably don't care so much. You're not a big Star Wars fan. I, I am a big Star Wars fan up until really the new trilogy that I don't care about as much, mostly because the fans ruined it for me because I'm tired of them. And honestly... I kind of came to this realization when I was talking to one of my friends. I don't really care about any of the characters in the new trilogy, I've come to realize. It's not like in the original trilogy, you're like, you're like, oh man, Luke Skywalker and Han Solo are so awesome. I want to see what happens. And I'm just kind of like, these are characters. They're cool, I guess. I want to know who Snoke was. There's theories on that, but I mean... It was an old wizard guy in a chair that got cut in half. That's who he was. Deal with it. But how did he come to be... I'm sure they'll Who make a Disney cares? Plus series Me. about Snoke. Wolverine was better when he didn't have an origin. This is true. Well, he was better before Wo- oh, X-Men Origins Wolverine. The <laughs> that's movie. A different, that's a different story. <laughs> <laughs> that we could all agree on. But uh, I don't really care. It's like, it, it, I, w- w- I mean, he was one of the good things in the original. Like, Phantom Menace, right? The prequel trilogy, including agree? Phantom Menace. I'm, yes. I'm me. I'm spe- specifying Phantom Menace. There was only like three, four good things in that entire movie, right? Let me guess. One of them was. Now this is pod racing, right, Willie? That's your uh, favorite part. N- no, I was gonna say uh, three of the char- three of them are characters. Yeah, you, know, you got uh, Obi Wan. That was I like you, Will McGregor in that. Okay. Uh, 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 Qui Gon Jinn. Uh, what's his nuts in it? And Darth Maul. You can't have Ray Park in there. And then uh, the fourth one is uh, the song, Duel of the Fates. Those are the fourth good things, right? Duel of the Fates is a pretty badass song. You're welcome. Memories. Good deal. Now, here's a question for you that just <laughs> randomly popped in my mind. I cannot stop thinking about it. Uh-oh. How the fuck are you supposed to fight with a lightsaber? It makes no sense. Like, the 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 blade part has no virtually no weight to it, right? Correct. Mm-hmm. So... So you're pretty much like thumbing through things, right? You have to use your thumb to pretty much to force a lot of stuff That's right. through. Thumb, thumb it in there. So we're just talking about porn again, right? <laughs> well, apparently you are. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, I didn't mean to go there, but I mean, no. But seriously, like, if two like two people are like holding it and trying to like force it to the other, like, you're you can't really rotate it because you're just having a a handle. That's all you're really moving, and you're trying to rotate the handle, and the other person like it makes no sense. Science fiction, man. Science fiction. Yeah, it's also a laser sword. So yes. you gotta kinda you gotta lift that lead balloon, man. You gotta suspend disbelief because it's, it's a laser sword. It's a laser sword that deflects <laughs> blasters, cuts through anything, and oh yeah, cuts off limbs without leaving any blood. Yep. Well, Instantly it, cauterizes any limbs. Yeah, I'll say it makes sense because it is a laser <laughs> so it would cauterize, wouldn't it? As it goes. That makes some sense, right? Science Somewhat. is not our strong suit here, guys. I mean, I can take that logically, but just depends on the power of the laser or the you know, the crystal. <laughs> yeah. Science, man. Let's go. 
Yeah, the physics of lightsabers is very, very tough to, to make work. Yeah, it's All wonky. I know is since I was six years old, I've wanted a lightsaber, and I still want one. Don't you have one? Well, I mean like a real lightsaber, not not this. Yes, I do have I a lightsaber. It's sitting right here, and I can it's go. It's probably better that you have something that you can't cut your arm off with. I'm just saying. Just get nunchucks <laughs> with razor blades on them. There you go. You got a lightsaber there. Just as dangerous. I got a lightsaber, guys. <laughs> Only you said that's more dangerous to your nut area. This is my lightsaber. It, it is mine. Not you may not have it. <laughs> there are many like it, but this one is mine. I don't know where it's been. <laughs> Nowhere, really. More like ass basement. saber. I got it on clearance at GameStop for like 40 bucks. That's the reason I have it. Nice. Now, now you know, oh. when, we actually, when, when technology gets up to us and we have lightsabers, there's going to be a lightsaber butt plug. You know it's going to be a thing. People are weird. Don't look at me like I'm the weird one. You know it's going to happen. They had a they had a uh, fidget spinner butt plug. They're going to have something of it. There's probably this already a light. There's Will probably already a lightsaber you know looking butt plug. Is that Luke's lightsaber? Is that the one it is? This is the Empire Strikes Back lightsaber. So generally, it's Luke's, Anakin's, and Ray's. Yeah, it's the murder of children lightsaber. Yeah, this is used to massacre children, younglings, which I guess and reading, younglings. You're and Tuscan Raider Devil? children. Yeah, if you go to the Star Wars land at Disney, if you refer to something as younglings, you'll they won't respond back because they're not allowed to use that term because <laughs> it's got such a bad connotation of Yan- Anakin killing younglings. Because Anakin murdered all the younglings. Yes, because Anakin massacred a shit ton of children. Yep. Which, yeah, I'm sorry. He did not redeem himself just because he ch- chucked his boss off a bridge. He's I'm, still a piece of shit. Yeah. <laughs> I love how we keep talking about child killings so much. Yep. Anakin the child murderer, he did it twice! Twice! And they act like because he held, he stopped his boss from killing his own kid, that wait, makes wait, him wait. a good guy at the end. What are you out of your time? fucking mind? The Tuscan when he Raiders. went to go rescue his mom. Oh, those are different species. They don't count. Doesn't matter. He murdered every man, woman, and child in a village because they kidnapped his mother. Because when he decided to go train for a Jedi, he left his mom as a slave for 10 years before even thinking about her. That's not true. It's more that the <laughs> Jedi Council wouldn't let him go back. Well, you know what? I'm actually okay with that, because think of it. If there's like a whole town that just kidnaps and pillages and rapes people, and like even the even the younger ones are going to grow up to do the same, is it really a bad thing to murder the whole town? Is Send it? all your hate so. mail to at South Porky on Twitter <laughs> because we are not going down this path on the All Things Good and Nerdy podcast. We are not pro Tuscan Raider here. All right, listen, <laughs> listen. You heard the thing about Batman doesn't kill because you if you kill a murderer, the number of murderers stay the same. Blah blah blah. Then you hear the punter saying that's why I kill multiple in mass. Yeah, because that only works the first time you do it. After that, the math problem changes. You dumb motherfuckers. Yeah, that's why Batman's <laughs> stupid. Batman's dumb. Anyone who likes Batman is fucking stupid. Because he has Send your hate mail. Code. That's South Porky. <laughs> oh boy. Batman well, is Punisher's got a moral people. code. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah, killing people. It's just different it's than okay. Batman's. But Batman's dumb. We need to get rid of Batman. Why is... Oh, I'm just tired of Batman. All right, so going uh, back a sec to Disney+, Plus, we've got presumably a Kenobi <laughs> series I, coming. We've got a Star Wars spinoff with Diego Luna and Alan Tudyk reprising their roles from Rogue One. And there is also The Mandalorian. In addition to all of the Marvel stuff coming up and the entire back catalog, they continue to make the Disney Plus service incredibly compelling when you consider that it is seven bucks a month or seven ninety nine a, a month. Somewhere. Is it a sequel to uh, Rogue One? It is a prequel, <laughs> is my understanding. I'm not sure how you do a sequel of Rotten Corpses. Yeah. <laughs> No, I think, is it isn't it supposed to be post uh, Empire Strikes Back timeline, but before the Force Awakens Mandalorian? Mandalorian is post Return of the Jedi, or post Return? Yeah, so yeah, so it's after the original trilogy, but before the new ones that fill in time when the the Empire is like partially crumbling and hasn't become the the First Order yet. Palpatine. So we're gonna find out where Snoke comes from. Possibly, who knows? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> It's going to be interesting, I though. John Favreau is the show, one of the showrunners on it. He directed a bunch of episodes. Taika Waititi came in and directed an episode and supposedly guest star. Hell yeah. There's a lot of stuff I'm going, you know, I'm kind of intrigued on. And I'm fully anticipating that Star Wars fandom will continue to ruin it for me by bitching and moaning about something that makes no sense and completely turns me off on the product. I, see, I, I don't see where 
Because I just started ignoring the fandom. I just watch the movies and the shows and enjoy them and ignore the fandom, and I'm fine with it. (laughs) I don't see why you're letting the fandom intrude and disrupt your enjoyment of Star Wars. I just started ignoring the fandom. I just don't like like all the negativity around it. And I don't get the negativity. I just tire of it. Who's... People whose sole purpose is saying, I love Star Wars, so I'm going to shit all over Star Wars because this is not my Star Wars. Like I said, if you're a fan, if you say that you're a fan and you spend more than 50 or 50% of your time complaining about something, you're not a fan. Yeah, you're disagree. just an online complainer. Well, disagree. do you know why I love the fans? Because without the fans, we wouldn't have got that awesome movie, Fanboys. Fanboys is a great movie. <laughs> It is a great movie. Uh, that's all I really had for my news, although I did just see that Sci-Fi canceled Krypton. Is anyone surprised? Oh, uh, yeah. I thought about mentioning that as my news. But I was, my only question is I at this point... I forgot that was a show. Yeah, me too. Why would you take your show to Sci-Fi to have them greenlight it if you know they're just going to cancel you after two seasons? Because you might not get it on TV at all otherwise. Well, yeah. let, let, me, let me restructure your, your question. <laughs> Why would you take your show to Sci-Fi? Done. Because you might not get it on TV otherwise. I mean, it's just sad, but I mean, any show that they don't own, as soon as it starts making money, they cancel it. It's fucking ridiculous. I can't as even soon as a show time. gets popular and they want more money and they can't get it because they don't own it, they cancel it. I can't even remember a time I've even seen a TV with the channel Sci-Fi on it. Well, even I, going I to other people's houses. It. I have I, never, I can, years, years I don't watch, years, I don't watch TV. <laughs> it's been at least a decade. The last show I watched on there was Face Off. When they canceled Face Off, I don't think I've watched anything on there since. Other than wait, I think I caught a uh, the movie. Yeah, no, 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 no. The uh, makeup and special effects uh, competition show that they they did that. named it that. Yeah, fuck them. No, it was perfect. It was perfect for a makeup and special effects show. <sighs> but Face Off, man, Face Off. I want his face off. Oh. I'm done. Go on. You are done. (laughs) When we start to hold the movie Face Off to such high reverence, I'm really concerned on this show. Oh, excuse (laughs) me. When you don't, I am very troubled. Willie, why do you hold that movie? Go go watch like the Cinema Sins on it, and you're like, okay, this is funny because it's all true. I love corny, cheesy shit. So, yeah, it's perfect for me. That's true. Fair. Okay. I'll let it go. Yeah, I mean, it has the best line of any movie ever in the beginning. You know, I could uh, eat a peach for hours. <laughs> yes, that's the best line in movie history stop it. right there. Stop it. <laughs> Back to point. You stop it. I'm really sad stop to it, say I this, say. but it's time that we throw things to Willie to see what he had for the news. No, it makes it so much worse. Willie, what do you got for us, sir? <laughs> so, uh, oh wait, how do I share this? I don't. Uh, so, I started making that playlist we talked about two weeks ago, of the weird porn parodies. Oh God. Um, how do I share that? You want to share the playlist, like on yeah. screen, or just so people can? Well, I don't. It? Or yeah, just view it. Uh, how do I do that? I don't know what tool you're using to make the. I, uh, YouTube. It's on YouTube. I just made a playlist on YouTube. Then you should be able to go and find that playlist, and there's a share link associated with it. Is it? Is that the share link? No, that's not the share. Oh no, no, no! Stop playing! Stop playing! Uh, there's, there's an edit. There's no Plug share it, button. Do it live. You can yeah, just go and say Google, share YouTube playlist. Let's see what it says. It's the second result on my autocorrect. Go to one of your playlists. Click on a video within the playlist you like to share. Okay, that's not it. I can download them. I don't want to do that. Wait, was this? Is this? Oh wait, this is message. I can message it to you. Let's let's do that. Oh, I can't wait. I'm a I mean, scared a little it's bit. That, it's all. It's all. It's all. Well, I don't know if it's safe for work because I mean, <laughs> they don't show anything. It's on YouTube, so they don't show anything. Yeah, so, Willie, that link you there's just the sent link. me is literally what you just needed to share to begin with. Yeah, but there's no like button that says share. Or there's no option. I guess that's the that's a weird looking share button that I clicked on. So I was like, all right, it looks weird. 
It's like a weird swooping arrow, but not any other type of weird swooping arrow that is for sharing. It's like a weird, different design. But there you go. You got the Lion King, you got Black Mirror, you got Aladdin. I'm not going to say the porn names because they're, of course, different. Except the Lion King. Oh, 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 I misread the Lion King. It's the Loin King. The Loin King? Jesus. Aladdin. Okay, I am going to read these. Yeah, I was going to say, just read out the porn parody names and it's more fun that way. So well, let us know what you got, Willie. What do you got? Legend of Zildo. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, Red Dead Erection. Okay, that's actually pretty decent. Fortnite. <laughs> also pretty decent. Fort Jurassic Fortnite? Jurassic Wood, Swollen Ding Dong. Oh. <laughs> oh, I didn't even watch this one. Vincom instead of Venom. Vincom. Jesus. That's a dumb one. Yeah, but I, I will be adding more to that uh, that uh, that that uh, uh, playlist. Is that what it's called? So, Willie, as yeah. you've progressed your research, how many of these have you then decided you had to go and watch for real? Oh, I've already watched a bunch of them, but there's like a handful I have not watched. It, it, it's well, just this channel. Let's, apparently, let's if you go honest, to the website, it's just the a, first eight minutes of a bunch of them. Well, how long are they? Even look at that. How long are they? I think they're like three minutes long, maybe. <laughs> That's all. Yeah, really it's needs. just. <laughs> well, no, it's not even anything. Uh, two minutes, a minute and a half. Two minutes, two minutes, two minutes, a minute and a half. One minute, yeah, they're not that long. They're just like, I guess they're just commercials for you to go to their website to watch the full things. Although there is one I did watch, and it was horrifying. That's the one where the Pikachu thing came from, the uh, the Pokemon one. Oh God, that mask will forever haunt my dreams. Yeah, you guys remember that mask? I showed you that oh, mask. Oh yeah, that was creepy and mm -hmm. weird. It was super creepy. Wait till you see the SpongeBob one, or is it, I think it's the Sponge Nut. I forget what it was called. I, I haven't added that one on there yet. Also gross. Very. So but that that that's my news. That's Porn news. parodies. How far have you gotten in your RPG that you're playing? I am well. I was going to get into, but I'm at fifty-five-ish hours in so far in the Dragon Quest Eleven. Now you guys know why Willie hasn't. Doesn't know what's going on in the world. He's been playing Dragon Quest. And I am not judging it, you. I'm jealous. If you want a uh, classical turn-based Jap Japanese RPG, Dragon Quest Eleven for the PS4. Uh, think it, I'm not sure if it came out for the Xbox. I have no idea. Oh, and I know it's coming. I, I don't think it's coming. I think it is. It's coming out or is not for the Switch. There's a whole uh, with added stuff to it. But I mean, I just wanted better visuals, so I got for the PS4. Makes Sorry, sense. Switch. You can't. You can't match it. <laughs> That's just the given. Yeah, I mean the, the Switch has never been about have the best graphics possible by yeah. playing on the Nintendo Switch. I mean, I'll get I'll get some uh, Nintendo first party games definitely. I mean, because well, obviously you can't get any worse. But I mean, that's what it's built for, and that's what I enjoy. I've Lego, uh, not Lego, blah, Luigi's Mansion Three. Fuck yeah, Animal Crossing. Hell yeah. Now, what's the other big one? Um. Shit, there was another big one. What the flipping new fl Metroid Prime Four? That's probably gonna be awesome. I've had that pre-ordered since it was announced because I could get the discount for Prime pre-orders still when they did that. So it's been over a year that I pre-ordered that game. Oh, you have a good yeah. reason for it, but I mean, when they announced it, all they showed was a title, like a title, yeah, and like a design. That's it. And it was like, okay, should I get excited for this? I the guess all you guys yes. a title. The correct answer is you should be excited for Metroid Prime Four. Now you're talking to somebody who pre-ordered the first Metroid Prime for the GameCube. See, and I got like a, I pre-ordered from Best Buy, and I got like a little GameCube disc holder, like a little flip book thing. Well, that's fancy. Like, yeah, it had a little, you know, a little, uh, the little screw attack design on top. It was nice. Uh, nice. I never really used it ever, but it was nice because I, I had the cases. I like it. I'm not, I'm not taking my GameCube over there. I wouldn't even know it had like nice little lunchbox it had handle. A handle, so you could take it with you to other people's houses. Did you do that? Never. My little purple lunchbox always stayed in the house. And to be honest, 
The only reason I had a GameCube is because I bought it at a used game store like three years after it came out for 30 bucks on their discount rack. And I was like, I can finally play Wind Waker and Tales of Symphonia and the other games I've wanted to play. All right, this might be a little bit embarrassing, but the get the first game I got with my GameCube because I uh, my my cousin brought it over with his, with his Xbox. I was like, I want to play this, and it wasn't available for the PS2. Or no, no, I didn't even have a PS2. That's right. The first game I got for the GameCube, The Simpsons: Road Rage. Why is that embarrassing? Oh, because I mean, it's, it's a taxi the greatest game ever, but it was fun. It's a uh, the the taxi game uh, clone. That's all it really was. It's crazy, crazy taxi. taxi. With the yeah. Yeah, I mean, I had a lot of fun with that. I played the shit. I unlocked everything. You know how long it takes to unlock everything? Long time. Very long time. Long time. Oh, That's hey. Memories with Willie. Memories with Willie. The newest segment on the All Things Good and Nerdy podcast. <laughs> that being said, uh, at the time, it is time for us to begin wrapping this thing up. How do we do that? Each week we do it with a segment called What I'm Into. It's our chance to share with you guys who are watching live or listening at a later date just what kind of geeky and nerdy things we've been getting into so that maybe, just maybe, you'll want to check them out yourselves. So, Anthony, why don't you kick us off this week? All right. Uh, They did a big patch update on No Man's Sky, so I've been getting into that. I actually just said to hell with it. I deleted my old games because I hadn't played it in like a year, and I started over fresh from scratch yesterday and streamed i think the first two hours of like landing on your first planet fixing all your broken gear fixing your ship taking off hitting your second planet building your base all the startup stuff um they they changed the interfaces they changed the way you do discoveries they changed the layout of all the uis um everything is different everything is improved um and already after the last huge patch where no man's sky became a viable really good working game um it's been fun but this made it even more enjoyable. Uh, the way the whole thing set up, they introduced a system of being able to feed creatures. Uh, you can do farming now once you actually build like structures on planets. Um, and I believe there's a way you can domesticate animals later on in the game, which I'm not to that point yet. But like they've got it to where you can use bait to uh, get different creatures to like come near you. But yeah, like huge changes made it really fun. It's honestly, it's like meditation. I like playing it and sitting there just grinding out mining and stuff. I guess, you know, it's probably like some of the way people like playing Minecraft where it's just mindless hours. But yeah, like I can put on a podcast and go, you know, build structures and mine for a couple hours and just check out planets. And it's just fun as hell. But yeah, I've been enjoying that again. Um, they put out a new event for Apex Legends called the Iron Crown event, which is both good and bad. Um, they made another change to the map where there was a section that was just kind of a couple of random buildings that didn't have names and they changed it to like the octane of octane event arena or I can't remember what it's called, but it's a bunch of ramps with octanes jump pad that you can run and slide down them and jump through a flaming hoop in the middle. And they made it to where there's a bunch of challenges and different things you need to do, killing people in that area, running and jumping through the flaming hoop while you're wearing body armor, doing all this stuff to unlock crown uh, coins Uh, The coins now go to a shop with a new shop with different items you can buy. Um, The good thing is, is the event itself is kind of cool. They introduced the solo mode along with it. So for the first time ever in Apex Legends, you can drop in solo and not have to worry about your teammates sucking and slowing you down. Or if you're more like me, you don't get the advantage of having two teammates that are better than you that help carry you to the win. So I haven't won a solo match yet, but I have gotten a couple of kills because honestly, I'm just not that good at first person shooters. Um, one of the big things that I would thought they were going to actually lower the number of people, but they do not. When you drop solo, it is still 60 players in the arena. So it's 60 solo players fighting for the last spot. And it's actually really fun because there's no revive. You drop in, you shoot someone, they instantly turn into a box because there's no teammate to revive you. If someone doesn't instantly turn to a box, you know they have a gold revive shield, which means you have to go finish them or they can get themselves back up. Um, but yeah, I played, I think, maybe like 20 or 30 matches in the solo. I've been enjoying it and it's doing some of the other stuff, going through the dailies and weeklies and unlocks. The bad part of it is the store they introduced. You can buy uh, Iron Crown event loot boxes. Because EA loves their surprise mechanics. It's true. And it is unfucking godly how expensive they are. They introduced a list of epic and legendary items. There's 24 of them skins for suits, sins, or skins for characters, skins for guns, um, music. And then if you buy all of them, all 24, then you have the opportunity to spend another 3,500 tokens to buy an heirloom set. 
Um, in the game, when you melee, you just punch people or you kick them. You don't have hand-to-hand weapons. But they've introduced the heirloom sets, which are the like the hardest, most random, luckiest things, like winning the lottery in a loot box. And the only one they had so far was Wraith, where you got a skin, a banner, I believe, and a kunai. So she actually had a dagger in her hand that she spins around while she's running. And so when she melees, she you know hits people with it, stabs them. Well, they introduced a heirloom for Bloodhound, which is a hatchet, which looks really cool. But altogether, if you want to buy it all, it, I think someone did the math. It's almost $200, basically, for 24 unlocks and then buying the heirloom. It's almost 200 bucks cash. So while it's a cool event and a bunch of streamers instantly the day it came out bought all of it, there was instant backlash. And there's actually been a response from Respawn saying, hey, you know, we didn't want like stuff to be like so expensive that people thought it was like unbuyable. And so the majority of the community seems to be outraged against the prices and aren't buying them. And so they made it to where those same skins now are going to be unlocked starting this Tuesday in the store. So you can buy them with Apex tokens, but it's still going to be too expensive. They're not going to like they're, they're buyable now instead of just a surprise mechanic, whether it's going to be, you can buy the specific skin you want if you want one. Cause like the lifeline skin is really good, but it's 700 tokens, I believe. So you're talking seven bucks for a skin. Like, it's insane the the prices they put on these by comparison to what they've had in the store before. They're way too expensive. So yeah, I won't be buying any of them, but the event itself has been fun and I've been enjoying playing. We've been having some having some team wins and having some fun doing the, the weeklies and stuff. So the season two battle pass has been great. The Iron Crown event itself is fun, but once again, it looks like EA kind of, you know, told Respawn how to set up the store and went money grubbing. But other than that, I did uh I had to hit Best Buy this week. And I had to get me another steel case because I needed I needed the end I needed the end game. That so, steel book annoys me though because the character costumes are all wrong on it and stuff like that. I think it's pretty. Yeah, it's their laziest <laughs> steel book they've done. How <laughs> often do you just look at the steel case and go, hmm? Very rarely, that's which pretty. is why I don't do the steel books anymore. Yeah, I, I wanted this do. one though. Yeah, but yeah. So this week I, I got Shazam it. and Endgame. And so yeah, I rewatched Shazam, which honestly I still think is the best DC movie since probably the original Superman. And yeah, watched Endgame again last night. And one of the best things about a three-hour movie is I had a really long day at a two-year-old's birthday party, and I was drugged up on anti-allergy meds, came home and showered and you know played some video games and went to watch Endgame with dinner. And I ate a bunch of pizza, and I fell asleep, and then I woke up, and it was time to fight Thanos, and it was perfect because it's a goddamn three-hour movie. Mm-hmm. So you can you can take a nap in the middle of it if you've already seen it six times and you don't feel bad. So yeah, watch that nice. last night. It was awesome. That's what I've been getting into. So going back to No Man's Sky, they also did put the uh, VR mode in effect for that. Oh for yes, both PlayStation and uh, and PC. So the question I would and ask sp- is, Willie, I know you have a PSVR oh, and yeah. you have No Man's Sky, don't you? I do. Have you tried it yet? That's a negative Ghost Rider. Are you going to try it? Possibly, I guess they should have. They should have done this when it first came out. I mean, that they that well, there's a lot too, with this game. Almost should, too yeah, late for me. I, I wouldn't mind trying it, but yeah, uh, Willie, they redid. I was gonna say they did for the VR specifically. They completely redid the cockpit inside the planes I've to heard. where you actually have like emergency handles that you grab to lift the canopy to get out of the plane. So, yeah, I mean, it, you can tell it was restructured for VR. And, yeah, the changes they made are just awesome. Like, all the ships are way bigger, so the inside of your freighters are bigger for when you're parking your ships. Um, the uh, the space anomaly where you go find the guys that gives you some of your missions has been completely redone from the inside. And I guess they changed the way the multiplayer is now, which I still, still don't really understand because, honestly, like, I just I restarted it. And I'm only two hours in, so I haven't run into a bunch of the new stuff other than just... Everything plays more smoothly. The whole game runs better. The tutorial system, the way they have the little pop-up information of what you need to do next works a lot better. It used to be like where basically once you had two or three missions going at the same time, you set one and it just told you that, like, okay, do this. And if you weren't doing that, it just ignored whatever you were doing. And now if you are if you have another mission and you're like you start getting items for that mission, you get like the mission pop-up saying, yeah, you're collecting this now. So keep collecting this, and you need to however many X more, and you'll move forward with that mission. So the whole system is much more intuitive, and it plays better. But yeah, I already liked it after the last huge update. But yeah, this was a game that 
Yeah, if if it was what it was today when it came out, it would have been fucking massive. But eh, what can you do? it launched what three years early? Apparently, <laughs> it was yeah. No Man's Sky's problem. But yeah, it is fun. If I had VR, I would try it in VR. Though it would probably I mean, give me a headache. But <laughs> I'll probably try it at some point in time. I don't know when. But also to go back to the Apex Legend thing. Wasn't that a whole um, the whole loot box thing? Wasn't it called something? Didn't they have a title above Surprise it? Mechanic. No, 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 oh. no. If, like when you're in it, because I'm looking at it right now. They called it the Iron Whale. Oh, it's the Iron Crown Challenge, and I think somebody called it the Iron Whale. Okay. Yeah, okay, it's like so you have to have a big ass wallet to buy this shit. That's fair. Yeah, because it's it, it, the one good thing, which I mean, no one can complain about this with respawn. If you want to buy all that shit and you want to spend the money, good for you. Fine. It does not improve your game. None of it is pay to win. It oh, is yeah. literally skins for the guns. It is music. It is emotes. It is skins for your characters. So yeah, even if you go drop two hundred bucks and you buy everything, uh, one of the streamers I was talking about, he's like, actually, if anything, some of the skins are very bright. And would make it to where you couldn't hide on a planet wearing them. So if anything, it actually makes it harder if you're the type of person that doesn't want to be seen in game. Because I mean, yeah, you can get there's a Pathfinder skin that's camouflage, and if you're running through the right zone, he's really hard to see. But there's also you know different terrains in the game, so it doesn't work everywhere. But yeah, the, some of the skins that are in the Iron Crown event, like you can see them from space. They're bright as fuck. Some of them are just really cool looking. But yeah, none of it is pay to win. So. I love that Respawn has kept that like very solid. You cannot buy anything in any of their stores that makes you a better player. Nice. All right, so I'll go next then. What I've been getting into, uh, bought Avengers Endgame on 4K this week. I didn't get a chance to fire it up until Wednesday, and I, of course, skipped to the uh, portals scene in Avengers Assemble and cranked my surround sound as high as I could. <laughs> um, on your left. So my apologies to my neighbors on either side of me because I had that thing bumping and the bass was rumbling for some stuff and it was I awesome. bet if they knew it was they would understand yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it was awesome i greatly enjoyed it i went and watched all of the special features however i haven't gotten through and watched the uh -huh. movie itself yet but i did watch pretty much every special feature on the avengers in-game blu-ray just because i wanted to consume the content i hadn't quite seen yet and that was fun i did pick up shazam the 4k blu-ray it was on sale on amazon for 20 bucks and i'd wanted to see it so I bought it. I just haven't had a chance to watch it yet. Let's see what else am I getting into. Wait, so have you not seen Shazam at all yet? I haven't seen it at all. Oh, yeah. You, I think you'll enjoy it. Honestly, I right. think it's the best interpretation of a character taking him from comic to movie that DC's done. Okay. I'll give Aqu that. Aquaman's great, but it's not Aquaman. It's Jason Momoa being charismatic as fuck, <laughs> and they called him Arthur Curry. That's not the same thing. Yeah, the way this you is, put that, this I'll is agree Zachary, with you. Yeah, this is Zachary Levi being shazam it's fucking he nails the character but i'm still saying the best dc movie is man of steel well, that's, Out. that's your role <laughs> that's the dumbest thing i've heard in a week <laughs> oh wait the last time i heard something that dumb was last week when he said the same thing yeah he's on repeat and i'll say it again next week <laughs> <sighs> willie willie i think you're just stupid Thanks, Naki. Thank you, Naki. We appreciate it. We're glad we already know she with agrees you. with you guys. So that's she's not, a that's normal, not. rational human being. But that's neither here nor there. Let's go back to what I I'm mean. To. I would say choice words, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I did normal also, might be. A... <laughs> I did also play a little bit more Marvel Spider Man, and I just didn't have a bunch of free time this week because work was crazy and there was a bunch of other stuff going on. I think you need next... to finish that, man, so we can talk about it. I have finished. I'm replaying it with the black suit. Oh. Well, never mind then. Yeah, I'm replaying it with the Black Suit from uh, Spider-Man Far From Home. And then the other thing I got into yesterday was one of the Pokemon Go. I don't think it was Community Day, but they were doing like a raid day so you could win a bunch of stuff potentially. I didn't get jack crap, but I had fun playing Pokemon with my friends yesterday. So that was the important thing. Pokemon Go made me go out in the 92-degree weather, sweat my ass off a little bit, and run around like a maniac. So thanks, Niantic, for making me semi-healthy, I guess. I, I don't know. Are we yeah. going to be trainer buddies when uh, uh, Sword and Shield come out? Of course we are, Willie. November yeah, we're going to be raiding together. The only problem is that's the same day the new Star Wars game drops, too, that I really want to play. So I got to... Wait, there's a new Star Wars game? Yeah, the one that Respawn's doing. That was quick. I talked about it on this show after E3. 
Memories with Willy is not always 100% correct. But yes, yeah, I will, that's true. I will be playing the new Pokemon game on November 15th when it comes out because it's a birthday present from Nintendo to me. The only caveat is I have to buy a second Switch between now and then because my wife and I both want to play and juggling mm. Switches would not be fun. So the question is... Whoa, uh, that's expensive juggling act. Yeah, well, ain't that the truth? Only if you drop them. Do I wait and hope there's some kind of sale that I don't ever anticipate seeing on the Switch, or do I just jump on the next decent bargain I find? And I think it's just jump on the next decent bargain I find. We'll see what happens. That's about all I've been getting into, Willie. So I'll throw it to you, Willie. What have you been getting into? I've been on Reddit, and uh, some news came out <laughs> about on, on on a certain subreddit that has. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure this is this is cemented in. The uh, the next uh, uh, Dead by Daylight characters that are going to be released, hopefully Killer and Survivor, is going to be. Um, well, I'll just say this: Netflix put out a tweet. Oh yeah, and, and it's just and they all all three. Uh, there's three different pictures with subtitles, and there's one word in each of them that are very particular. They all like one says dead, one has by, and one has de- day uh, daylight. So. Dead by Daylight. I'm I'm looking at you. Stranger Things character pack coming in. I I'm waiting for that. I'm probably gonna die a lot to the uh the fuck uh the uh Demi Gorgon. Yeah. So I can't wait. I hope Steve Harrington is the survivor. Or I, 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 you know what? I prefer uh, Harrington over uh Hopper. I'm saying it right now. Sorry, David uh, David Harbor. Whoa. You were you were you were a good Hellboy. Enjoyable Hellboy. Critics are wrong. They can go fuck themselves. Wow. I that mean, was a, it, that was a made-for-TV movie from 1987. I would say, I would disagree with that. I had fun with it. It was an enjoyable movie. I I can't say anything bad about it. Very enjoyable, unless you're like having the mindset of the you know, you know the original you know the first two of, movies of which, the good ones of of the good ones. Excuse yeah. you. They're all yeah. good ones. So, it was lacking. So you're so talking much about Del Toro Toro that about it was, one. Yeah. It wasn't worth. It wasn't worth watching. Well, you're wrong on that, but you know you're all you're entitled to your wrong opinion. Just like Man of Steel is the greatest DC movie of all time. Mm-hmm. Better than fucking anything Batman's in. Fucking stupid ass Batman. Just kill. Just kill the fucking villains. They're gonna come back out like they always fucking do. So just kill them. Jesus uh, Christ. There he goes. Um. Oh, and I've been playing a shit ton of Dragon Quest. Uh, I'm about I'm about to the Yggdrasil tree, I believe. Nice. And uh, so so yay for that. Um, so I've been forging weapons and armor and all this stuff, and it's been fun doing that. I'm glad that that's a good surprise mechanic that I was not uh, anticipating being in the game. That's how you do a real surprise mechanic: is you don't tell anyone it's in there. <laughs> then it's really a surprise. Um, I did finish uh, Punisher Season 2, which was uh, very good. I enjoyed that as well. Although it did seem like it had two completely separate storylines, and they're just like, yeah, we'll just kind of have this one in here. We'll introduce this one, then we'll forget about it for most of the season, then we'll bring it back, tie it back together. and But it doesn't really tie back into the other. It's whatever. It's still enjoyable. It's, it's uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Baron, Baron Throne? What's his name? Help me out with this. I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. He was from The Walking Dead. John Barenthal. Barenthal? Oh, yeah, John oh Barenthal. Yeah, yeah. Barenthal, that's it, yeah. Yeah. Shane. Yeah. Very enjoyable as a Punisher. Oh, no, I, lo- I love his Punisher. His Frank Castle is really good. It's believable as a as a mentally wounded veteran. And, and I also did get the Steelbox uh, Avengers Endgame, of course, like I did with you know most of the other Marvel movies. And uh, that's about what I've been. Have I been doing anything else? Um, had some, yeah, had some fun times uh, that cannot be shared here. So, yeah, secrets. <laughs> you can you can ask me at South Porky on Twitter. Secrets. So what's Willie? What Willie's not telling you is he he got a water fountain and put chocolate in it and then made s'mores in his chocolate fountain. That's the secret. <laughs> I could see him doing that. That actually sounds pretty delicious. What? Don't sound bad. The yep. fuck are you talking? 
You Talk about a chocolate on. fountain, you light you the marshmallow bastard. on fire, and then you dip it in the chocolate fountain to put it out and coat it in chocolate, and then you put it between two graham crackers. That'd be fucking delicious. L to the yeah. The problem with that is that fire is going to char a little bit of the chocolate as it comes onto it, and that just does not sound delicious at all. Well, we got to find out. So we're going to come visit your chocolate fountain here in a little bit. I don't have a chocolate you fountain. You have a chocolate you fountain. You better. I we drive know. all the way over there. You fucking better. We know you have a chocolate fountain, Willie. We know it. Yes, I have a secret chocolate fountain. I know. <laughs> cool. Yes, come on all over to see Willie's chocolate fountain of Freezing. deliciousness. Yes, come on, come on, whatever. <laughs> it's a thing, I guess. It is. We're going to come get some chocolate from your chocolate fountain, and it's going to make for a delicious snack, I think. Sure. I love how miffy is by this. That just made my day. <laughs> uh, I can't the find best. the the Netflix Stranger Things Dead by Daylight tweets, but I did find apparently the Switch is getting a a trapper that's an exclusive trapper skin on just the Switch, which makes me angry. Oh yeah, yeah, it's, it's kind of it, cool looking. It's just it's just a red color to his overalls. That's it. It's to his it, default. But That's red it. and black is my favorite color scheme, and it's like a broken in half red hockey mask. I kind of like it. Eh. Huh? Good for those get on the yourself switch. A switch and get it that way, I guess. No. Um. Oh, first of all, <laughs> you see how well this game works on the current gen hardware. How yeah. well do you think it's going to work on the switch? <laughs> I might as well be playing the mobile version, and I'm not it's doing an that. Online <laughs> only game for the switch. Who's the genius that came up with that idea? The person at Dead by Daylight that wanted to make more money to see if they could get Nintendo to put it on the Switch, and there they go. did. Uh, there you go. Put people on meat hooks on the go, or yep. not really on the go because you have to have an internet connection. <laughs> that all being said, guys, it is time for us to start shutting down this stream. We stream this show, the All Things Good and Nerdy podcast, podcast, excuse me, every Sunday live at 11 a.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Central, over at Geeks Live. Yes, that is an actual URL. It is the streaming home of the Gunna Geek Network. So please come back and see us next week. We look forward to being back with some more internet-based shenanigans. As we shut this thing down, you guys have any final thoughts for us? Buttery biscuit talk. Mm, yeah, biscuits. this has been Biscuit Talk with the Biscuit Boys. <laughs> ooh, ooh, the bi- ooh, can we call ourselves that from now on? I'm pretty sure no one will stop us. <laughs> yeah, we the biscuit boys. I got no biscuits, but I'm definitely ready for a goddamn breakfast burrito, man. We All got a biscuit your buns. Talk got me got me hungry as hell. I think it's time for breakfast burrito and some more Avengers Endgame because I haven't watched all the bonus stuff yet. So today is bonus features day. So Go watch the it. Stanley show. Yeah, you heard it here. Watch all that stuff. Go get yourself a biscuit and talk about it with us, the Biscuit Boys, next week. The Bis- Bye, guys. Biscuit Boys! Thanks for listening to this brand new episode <laughs> of the All Things Good and Nerdy podcast. Don't forget, we'll be back next Sunday He's so live butter. at 11 a.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Central, over at live.atgnpodcast.com, channel 3 of the Alpha Geek radio app, and over at our network home at gunnageek.com slash live. If you have any feedback for the show, please contact us at atgnpodcast at gunnageek.com on our hotline number at 304-806-ATGN, or even better, go to Twitter and send us a message at ATGN Podcast. The music you've heard in this show is produced by Kevin McLeod and can be found at incompetech.com. 